Aloha, it was wonderful seeing you today. Tell you what, we're gonna do a quick recap on what we worked on for our Mando lesson. Keep going over the other videos that we've done. Um, however, each one of these should pancake on concepts. Today we really went over what the one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are. In the key of C major, we've got all natural notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So when we play them, it has the tones of a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, half step. Quite literally meaning there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve half steps or minor seconds in between octaves. So what happens is when I'm trying to figure out a major third, I know there are one, two, three, four half steps giving me that major third. I know there are one, two, three half steps or minor seconds, which give me that minor second. So when we're playing something, let's say like a, uh, a G major, and we've got our B, D, and our uh, G, if I move that median down a half step, I get a G minor. So the other chords that we talked about are like having a flat five and a flat third, which gives us our diminished. So when we use that chord, the diminished are generally the seventh tone or the seventh triad that is in a major chord. So in the key of C major, C major, the one is a major, the two is a minor, the three is a minor, the four is a major, the five is a major, the six is a minor, and the seventh is a diminished. Meaning that tone you're hearing, that C, D, E, F, G, A, B, has a B, D, and F because my triads keep moving up. No black keys in this case. So when I have that, I don't have a F sharp, which would give me a B minor. I've got a F, which gives that D, do. If I played a D uh, diminished, D, D major is D, F sharp, A. In the key of C, the D, C, D can't be a D major. It's a D minor, D, F, A. Already has that F in there. So if I drop that A down to a a flat or a G sharp, I get my D diminished. Now my D diminished is a half step away from D sharp or E flat, so D diminished resolves to E flat major or D flat uh, or D sharp major. Either way you look at it, uh, it's an enharmonic, enharmonic equivalent. So what we're gonna do, the lesson for this week is to be able to take any note on your instrument and work it up on one line and hear the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step movement. Let's pick the high string. So this high string has a, uh, let's see here. Let's do our E string. Eh. Yeah, let's do the E string. Okay, so E, E major has uh, four sharps. Now, rather do that, let's do F major. F major has one flat. That flat is B flat. It is the fourth tone in F major, meaning if I find C, C, D, E, F, it is a perfect fourth. When I do my movements to get a F, G, A, my next note needs to be a B flat. This is a great way to explain what we're trying to explain right now. If I went a whole step from F, it would go to G. If I went a whole step from G, it would go to A. If I went a whole step from A, it would go to B. I don't want that tone because I want Do, Re, Mi, Fa, not a raised fourth, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, which gives me a different type of mode. What we're looking for is the mode that teaches us all the other modes. So out of a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, we're gonna derive every other mode. So when we say a major is a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, when we want to get a minor, we just start the sixth. So we have a whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, which makes that interval distance. So with the F note here on the first fret, if I was gonna build this all the way up, I would go from an F to a G. That's a whole step. And now I need another whole step from the G to the A. And then the A to a B flat is a half step. B flat to a C is a whole step. C to a D is a whole step. D to an E is a whole step. And now I need a half step for my T do. And you will be a whole octave away from 
that note. Try it on any key and work that up on one string and what you'll realize is when you get so far up to the seventh fret on all these strings, it becomes the next string. So our case and example would be if I had G, G has one sharp, it is F sharp. It is the seventh. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. That F sharp is gonna be the hanger, the one that's one I'm moving. It's a lending chord, it's a leaning or a moving chord. So if I have a G, I don't want to go G, G sharp. I want to go G to A. And G to A is a whole step. A to B is a whole step. B to C is a half step. C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. E to F would be a half step, but we don't want that tone. We don't want Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ta, Do. We want T, Do, a whole, not a whole step, a half step away. So we've got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And when we do this, each one of those can be moved up. So when I go from G, A, B, C, D, at D, I realize that if I'm going to hit my next note, my E, I have to play the D string at the second fret. Thusly, I don't put an open note in that phrasing. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Or, if I want the open note, omit that seventh ring pinky. G, A, B, C, open D, E, F sharp, G. So the takeaway is, once you learn what the notes are going slow, G, F sharp, no, I'm sorry, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, you work on just two notes at a time, then three, then four, then five, then six, then all seven. Here's what it looks like. Here's what we're gonna be doing in the next couple weeks for your practice as well. G G G G G G G G A A A A A A A A G G G G G G G G A A A A. And once you're pretty confident for the G to A, and you're like, oh, those two are next door neighbors. A to B is also a next door neighbor grouping. It's still a whole tone. And you're gonna know it because you're gonna know G A G A. Then you're gonna know A. full fourth and twos then you do threes then you do another three Once you do all the three note phrasings all the way up through the scale, you do four note phrasings. G, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, B, C, D, E, C, D, E, F sharp, F, if we're in the key of uh, C. When we get through it, once you practice this over and over and over and over again, it just becomes a, like a, a, a practice, a warm up. Melodies and improvisational skills come from muscle memory of remembering what a four note pattern sounds like. All those notes are just a melodic minor inside the key of G. So what we're looking to do is expand from just do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, which is Ionian, major. We could go over the other three modal scales, which have a raised fourth, do, re, mi, fa, which is called Lydian, or Mixolydian, which just has a flat seventh, do, re, mi, fa, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, rather than that ti, do, that has that do, do. And what you'll notice is when you have a seventh chord, like a G7, that note works perfectly over the top. That T, T, do, doesn't so much. So we use different modal structures, which might be one or two notes off to exhibit what we're trying to achieve melodically. I hope all that makes sense. Our secondary rhythm exercise this week is going to be a hammer pull off in a slide function. Follow me here. Put your first finger on the first fret on the F note, and then you're going to attack for the F note and then lay down your pinky on the fourth fret to get the minor third away. F, F sharp, G, G sharp. G sharp or A flat, 
is a minor third away. Why? It has three. Uh, where are we? F? F to F. One, two, three. And it's three half steps. So that's a minor second. So try doing attack, hammer on. And when you put your hand on, you're going to pull your finger not only just off, but you're going to pull it down towards your fretboard and back, kind of like a whoop. And it'll give you your pull off. Hammer on, pull off. You can try it with your pinky. You can try it on the third fret with your third finger. Try it on the second fret for a minor second pull up. Call those telephones. Um, do it on every string. Get your fingers comfortable doing that. The slides, slide from one to four, then one to three, then one to two, and then maybe one to five. Do that same thing again, doing five to nine, five to eight, five to seven, five to six. Slide that all the way up. I'm just yeah, yeah, like that, just the same pattern. So whatever pattern you use, try and do it over and over again on every string. Think of it like a spider exercise. In fact, do a whole grouping of four spider exercises and then go into that, that kind of movement. Just anything you wanna do, really. It's just about moving your fingers and letting your brain do the thinking in slow time so when you're moving yourself in real time, they become melodic memories. I hope all this sunk in. The only thing I wanna say is go over the key of C major with no sharps and no flats and see how a B diminished is a D, F, uh, B, D, and F. And then let's say in the key of C sharp major, look how your D, uh, I'm sorry, your B sharp diminished is nothing more than a, like a C major played as a minor with a flat five. That gives you your C diminished or your B sharp diminished, which resolves to your major. I really enjoyed seeing you today. I cannot wait to see you next week. Um, give me a buzz if um, you have any questions on this or put it in the comments section below. Aloha.